Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Not long ago I did a netcode analysis for Star Marine, the first person shooter module of Star Citizen, and I promised to test patches that change the networking of the game. So today we will have a look at version 2.6.1, which brought us servers in Europe and Australia. But before we get into that, we must take a look at a few networking basics so that you understand the results of my tests. The reason why I include this basic information in every video is that I do not want that someone who is new to those netcode analysis videos must watch another video first to understand what the analysis is about. Also I've noticed that it does not really work to tell your viewers to watch another video first, which then leads to them drawing the wrong conclusions or they simply do not understand the information which I share in the video. Now, if you already know the networking basics from one of my previous videos, then you can use the timecode link inside the description of this video to skip that part. Sadly, I cannot provide you with an annotation anymore, because YouTube decided that the new end screen disables annotations, and I cannot use the cards feature to provide you with a skip function, as a card is not allowed to link to the same video. So thank you YouTube for killing that feature for me. Let's start with the ping. Now, what is that and where does the term come from? If you've seen the movie The Hunt for Red October, then you might remember that scene where Sean Connery gave the order to check the distance to the US submarine with one active sonar ping. The way this works is that your ship sends out an audio signal which then gets reflected by other objects in the water. And on your ship you have microphones which then hear that reflection. If you then measure the time between sending the audio signal and receiving the reflection, then you can calculate the distance between you and the object. The ping that we talk about for network connections is pretty much the same thing. Your device sends an ICMP echo request to another network device like a game server, which then sends an ICMP echo reply back to your device. Now, when you measure the time between sending the request and receiving the answer, then this gives us the ping or round trip time of the data. So the ping tells us how long the data has to travel through the copper and fiber optic cables to reach the other device. And the longer it takes the data to get to its destination, the bigger the difference between what we see on our monitor and what the other players see on theirs. Which is what we call lag. So when I jump, then this information takes some time to reach the server and then the other client. With short distances between the players, this delay or lag is also very short. But when the distance gets bigger, then the clients have to wait longer until they receive an update on what is going on. So the higher your ping, the more you will lag, which leads to a bad experience. But it's not just the player with the high ping that suffers. Depending on how strong the lag compensation is in a game, the high ping player can also give the low ping player a bad experience. But that is a different topic. So the distance between the client and the server defines how long it takes data to travel between them. However, you can't take a map, draw a line between your home and the location where the server is hosted and then calculate your ping based on that distance, because the copper and fiber optic cables take a very different route and the data that you send to the server has to pass through multiple routers before it even reaches the server. So when a router has to forward data, then it always tries to find the best and fastest route. This means that when everything works as it should, then your data will take the shortest route to the game server. However, it can happen that a router either chooses the wrong route or that it has to choose a worse one when the better one is down. Such can then lead to quite big detours for your data, which can result in much higher pings and an increased risk of packet loss since your data might have to pass through many more routers then. So when you always play on the same server and suddenly notice that your ping increased, then this could be caused by the routing. And if this is the case, then you have to call your internet service provider so that they can check their routing tables. If you want to help them to get the issue fixed faster, then you can open the command prompt, type in tracer and the IP of the game server that you have problems with. You will then get a list of all the hops between you and the game server with the pings between you and every of those hops. With that information, it will be much easier for your ISP to track down the issue and fix it. So the length of the route that connects the client to the server defines how long it takes data to travel between them. This means that our lag cannot get lower than the ping since we would have to break the laws of physics to speed up the electrons or photons that are used to communicate with the server. What adds an extra delay on top of the travel time of our data is how frequently we send and receive it. So when we send and receive updates 30 times per second, then there is more time between the updates than when we send and receive 60 updates per second. 
So by sending and receiving more updates per second, you can decrease the additional delay that is added on top of the travel time of your data. But where's that data coming from? This is where the term tick or simulation rate comes into play, which is how many times per second the game processes and produces data. So when you have a tick or simulation rate of 30, then this will cause more delay than when you have a tick rate of 60, which also allows update rates of 60 Hz then. Now, what kind of options do developers have when it comes to providing servers? One solution is that you pay hosters to set up dedicated servers for your games in their data centers to which the players then connect to. This means that your game server is running on powerful hardware, the data center provides enough bandwidth to handle all the players that connect to it, and the players are not able to see each other's IP addresses. At least as long as the game does not use a bad peer-to-peer -peer voice over IP solution. Also, if the developers ensure that all players have more or less the same ping to the game server, then you can avoid that some players have an unfair advantage. The downside of dedicated servers is that if you don't have a game that builds around the idea of having the community run these servers, then the publisher or game studio has to pay for them and they are quite expensive. Another problem is that when you release your game worldwide, then you also need to make sure that you have enough server locations to provide all players with low latency servers. If you don't do that, then you create many hyping players and that is a problem for your entire community, not just the players who don't have servers near them. The other approach is that you simply use the PC or console of one of the players to host the game, which means that he becomes the server. With this solution, the game studio does not have to pay for expensive dedicated servers, which must be available in many different regions. This also allows players in remote regions to play with their local friends at relatively low latency. One of the downsides is that the player who is also the server gets an advantage because he has zero lag, which means that in a first person shooter he will see you before you see him and he can fire at you before you can fire at him. It is also possible for the host to further exploit this by artificially increasing the ping of all the other players, which is called lag switching. And the host also sees the IP addresses of all the other players that connect to him, which is in my opinion quite a big security concern. Then we also have the problem that all players connect to the host through his consumer grade internet connection, when the worst case he could even use Wi-Fi. This frequently results in a lot of lag, packet loss, rubber banding and an unreliable hit registration. But the most frustrating part of such client hosted matches is that if your host disappears, then the game must choose another player to host the match, which means that the whole game pauses for several seconds until the host migration has finished. So while dedicated servers do not magically provide 100% lag free connections, they still offer the best possible experience in online multiplayer games. Now, if you have seen my netcode analysis for Star Marine 2.6.0, then you already know that both public and private matches use dedicated servers. And in 2.6.1 you can now select a server location here in this drop down menu. Now how about the update rates? In 2.6.0 the client sends and receives updates every 33 milliseconds, so that's 30 updates per second. In 2.6.1 the time between updates now varies quite a bit, but the average is still at around 33 milliseconds, so we also have the 30 updates per second here. An issue that was carried over to 2.6.1 is that updates sent by the server get split into multiple packets because the information does not fit into one packet. Network bind culling would potentially fix this problem as that feature will ensure that clients only receive the information they need. So when you can't see a player because he is behind you, or when there is a wall between you and that player, the network calling will make sure that the server does not send you unnecessary information about that player. This feature was originally planned for 2.6.0, then it got pushed to 2.6.1 and now it just disappeared from the roadmap entirely. So no one knows what happened to it or when it will make its way into the game. Now what effect does this have on the delay that two players experience when they play on the same server? To test this I use a high speed camera, two PCs where each of them has its own fiber internet connection and 144Hz gaming monitors on which the game runs at 144fps, which is the frame rate limit at the moment unless you create a user.cfg file to increase the FPS cap. To measure the delays between the players I point my high speed camera at the monitors and then fire 20 shots with player 2. Inside the high speed recording I then look for the frame where I see that player 2 fired his gun and then I count the frames until I see the gunfire on the monitor of player 1. 
In addition to this gunfire test, I also did two movement tests. In the first one, player 2 jumps, and I count the frames until I see the player model jump on the monitor of player 1. In the second test, player 2 moves to the side, and then I count the frames until I see his player model move on the monitor of player 1. So, when I tested 2.6.0, I had a ping of 107 milliseconds to the game server, because we didn't have servers in Europe back then. This was a slight problem, because when I do a netcode analysis then, my clients usually have a ping of about 25 milliseconds to the game server, as games usually host them in Amsterdam. So I decided to remove that additional delay from the test results to make it easier for you to compare the results of Star Marine to those from the other games that are tested in the past. With that in mind, I measured an average delay of 72 milliseconds in the gunfire test, 370 milliseconds in the jump test and 368 milliseconds in the walk test. Now in 2.6.1, at a ping of 21 milliseconds to a game server hosted in Germany, I measured an average delay of 61 milliseconds in the gunfire test, 445 milliseconds in the jump test and 442 milliseconds in the walk test. So while the gunfire delay slightly decreased in 2.6.1, there is definitely something going very wrong here with the movement delays, as these increased compared to 2.6.0. Now let me show you what this means for your gameplay experience. In this example here, both players have a ping of about 21 milliseconds to the game server. The gunfire is more or less in sync, as the average delay is 61 milliseconds or about 4 frames at 60 fps. However, due to the massive delay that the movement is suffering from, players will receive damage very far behind cover, or take damage from players who are moving out of cover before they can even see them. And you can expect that this issue is even worse on a full server, because some players have a ping of 100 milliseconds or even more. So we do know that version 3.0 should include a big netcode rework, but we don't know any specifics. I hope that the developers will fix this massive movement delay in one of the next patches, as well as introduce network culling in order to lower the downstream traffic for the clients and to eliminate the split packets. I will keep you updated on the progress that the developers make in their updates. Another thing that I want to mention is an issue that I ran into when updating Star Citizen from 2.6.0 to 2.6.1. For some reason the download stopped with just a few megabytes left and I couldn't get it to finish the download. I restarted the client multiple times, I completely deleted all local files, I disabled peer-to-peer, -peer, I changed the peer-to-peer -peer settings, I really tried everything, but the client just wouldn't download the last few megabytes of the update. So what eventually worked on both of my machines was to simply disconnect and then reconnect the network cable from the PC once the client reached a point where it wouldn't download anymore. This then somehow forced the client to reconnect, restart and finish the download of the update. So if your client also won't finish the update, then this workaround might help. I hope that you enjoyed this netcode analysis of Star Marine 2.6.1 and if you like this kind of niche content where I take a look at the inner workings of video games and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help me to cover the costs of this channel by supporting me through Patreon. The link is in the description below. Also, if you want to know what I'm currently working on, then you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook. The links are also in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.